Hey guys, Roverdude here. Uh, this is just a really quick tutorial on how to build your very first OKS base. I'll tell you the whole you know, colonization, MKS, OKS, it's a very, very complex mod. There's lots of moving parts to it. But I'm going to try to do some videos to kind of help you guys out. Because I think once you see it once, all this stuff actually does make sense. Okay? We're going to start with a very simple five Kerbal base. I'll go ahead and do a supplementary video after this. They'll show how to build like a really giant one, but this is just basics. So start, get this operational. Once you have this working, I mean, everything else is pretty intuitive, but do yourself a favor. Don't try to build some massive base to start with. Always start with a very, very simple outpost, and we're probably talking less than you know 15 parts in total. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Um, I have a cupola here just for aesthetics. I'm going to add some solar panels. I found that the um, power units that come with MKS are pretty decent, but I sometimes need a little bit more juice, so I usually, usually put solar panels on my uh, bases just to kind of supplement that. Not a big deal. Okay. So the first module we need is a module to kind of control the entire colony, or outpost in this case. All the MKS stuff under utilities. Let's go ahead and swing down here. And they're, these are color-coded, so you can kind of see a little bit with the coloration. It is a bit easier on the MKS side to see the color coding, usually by tier. But you get, get kind of a feel for they're going to be in the uh, list. So first one is the Colony Control Center. Um, all this guy does is create a resource called Punch Cards. These, in turn, are consumed uh, by other MKS and OKS modules. Just need one of those. Next thing we want to go ahead and do is um, have some life support. Okay. So how life support works, there are two key modules for that. Uh, one is going to be the, uh, the aeroponics module. This guy makes plants. The second one is going to be the Kerbitat module. Um, this guy goes ahead and converts like Kerbal waste products into like compost and things that the plants can go ahead and use. Uh, that's basically it. Uh, these are kind of special in that they don't quite work on their own. Um, you'll get some flat efficiency based on those, but they really need you know, space to do things. So, for example, take plants. Okay, you know, I can have all my equipment for growing plants here, but I need a lot of physical space to grow plants. So adding more of these guys doesn't really help, but adding space to grow the plants does. Um, just like um, the Kerbitat here. You know, I only need so much space to handle you know, waste recycling and things like that. I need a lot more space to physically house all the Kerbals comfortably. Um, so both these guys um, use a special kind of enhanced part that as you add additional secondary parts, it dramatically increases the efficiency um, of these core components. So I only need one of these, you know, but I will um, actually need additional parts to kind of support them. In the case of our aeroponics module, I'm going to put it right here for aesthetic reasons, we need ah, here we go, an agricultural module. This is simply the space in which you grow the plants in, okay? So each one of these guys, you must have at least one, can extend the capability of an aeroponics module to support roughly five more Kerbals. So if you want to have a 50 Kerbal base, you got to have 10 of these guys. Um, you got to have at least one, so this particular base will support five Kerbals off the bat. We're actually going to do a five Kerbal deployment here later on. So we got that. The corresponding one for the habitation module is the hab ring right here. And this guy for each one of these, it can support up to 10 Kerbals. So you still need at least one. You still need to have a Kerbitat. This simply enhances and extends the capabilities and the capacity of the Kerbitat. One per 10 Kerbals. So if you want to have, again, a 50 Kerbal station, which we'll do later on, um, go ahead and include you know, five of these things. So we have so far, we have command, we have our Kerbitat and our aeroponics, so I have life support pretty much covered at this point. We do need power, so you can use whatever you want to. I personally tend to use the PDUs. This is just a giant RTG, basically. And it will support these guys pretty well, although I have found that having the solar panels does help. Just a little bit of supplementary power. So I think we are good. Now, where this guy's kind of special is that unlike an RTG where it's a very static uh, power curve, this guy has both a base power curve plus additional power um, based on efficiency. And efficiency is a combination for the Kerbals. How many Kerbals do you have? How many are in the base? Um, where are they located at? Um, are they happy? So if a Kerbal has lots of space around him, he'll be happier. If you try to put like 50 Kerbals in a very, very small base, they'll be very unhappy. Your, your um, productivity will suffer, right? So 
generally it's common sense. You get a, kind of a feel for it. So again, start with a small base and kind of see how adding stuff and boosting kind of affects the numbers. But in general, you want to have you know lots of room, lots of space. You want to have happy curls. You can get stats on this too, and we'll see it here in a little bit. So let's see. Some. There, there, there. They're good. I think that covers it. Oh, the last thing we need is um, supplies. So you are going to need some basic stuff. Most of these modules do actually don't have storage space. So even though the Kerbatat needs to do stuff like work with your know, compost and waste and stuff like that, there's no storage for those resources. This is by design. Uh, the reason is these menus got absolutely huge. So I pulled resources out of all the modules other than the core stuff to make them work. So you will need um, supplementary stuff two choices. Um, if you are using 0 0.24.2, you will have these little guys here, these radial supply tanks. And let's go ahead and do it as single ones. And you would basically need one for the life support, an empty one to support all their waste as has a place to go. You need repair parts. These guys, you do not need very many of these. Um, I could probably run this thing for a couple of centuries with this much stuff. You probably need more like this. Very, 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 very small. Not, not a lot. Um, there's a rumor that these aren't used. Trust me, they are used. But we're talking like this station might use half a ton a year. Uh, it's not a lot. It's very, very little um, resources. That's why I say don't don't sweat the whole manufacturing bit because you can still really easily support a station um, with a minimum of supplies without having to worry about it. But it is there for folks who want to build like you know really long-term stuff or get into some more fun aspects of like station management, things like that. Uh, last thing would be agriculture. This is just to store the intermediary products um, produced by the greenhouse and the Kerbatat because there is no resource storage on these modules, so you do need that. So you would normally have four of these guys. They're kind of a pain. They're kind of weird to put in there. Um, and they have pretty heavy capacity. You really don't need a lot. So one thing we have in 0 0.25, and you know, maybe early if I do a pre-release, is this guy here. This is the Pioneer module. This basically wraps all that stuff into one package. So it has all of your repair kits, a very small quantity. It has space for all of your recyclables, all your waste products, all your agriculture products, and life support stuff. Everything you need in one very, very small package. It's also a CAS container, too, by the way. So, pretty cool stuff. So, you just want one of those or four of these if you're still in the old release. So, I think we're almost done. A couple more things. First off, note the weight. This is a 21.7 ton um, launch. Actually, it actually isn't too bad for a completely working station. But, all these guys do require, at least these last two here, machinery. So how MKS works is the modules are very, very light. They launch empty. You then put all the machinery in either during launch. You'll see how this changes the mass here in a second. And let's put all the stuff in there. So either you pay the hit now by adding additional mass at launch. That's one choice. Um, or you can just cannibalize from older modules. You can eventually manufacture your own machinery. Either one works. So if you're just doing like a, a Kerbin LKO orbit, just add the stuff in. If you're trying to build an entire you know, 10 stations around Joule, yeah, you know, it probably makes sense to do your own manufacturing inside versus ship, you know, tons and tons of equipment out there. Either one works, just different gameplay choices. So now I have all the stuff I need for a station. I got yeah, you know, my little cupola here, I have some solar panels, I have the C3, I have my um, agriculture module, the aeroponics unit, I have my Kerbatat, my Habring, I have a PDU, I have all my supplies, I've gone ahead and made sure everything had all its equipment in it, it's actually in pretty good shape. And the last thing I'm going to go ahead and do is crew this, and this actually is kind of important. Intelligence does matter, but not as much as folks think. So you don't want to have like idiots in there, but you want to have like some fairly smart Kerbals. The smarter the Kerbal, the more efficient it is. Now, you also want to make sure all these Kerbals are working. Don't just toss them in hitchhiker units, because that's going to kill you. Um, the intent is you have to have really smart folks working in these modules. Most have two slots. I can do five Kerbals, so I'm going to go ahead and pick a mixture. I'm going to pick a smart one and an average one and throw them in the aeroponics module. I'll pick a smart one and an average one, put them in the Kerbal. I have one left, so I'll put you know, a fairly smart one and I'm going to put him in the PDU. Um, the reason is, this guy will be lower in efficiency, but honestly, I, I don't need to have as much command and control for such a small colony, but I really need to make sure I have maximum productivity with aeroponics and Kerbatec. That's my life support. That's pretty critical. And I do tend to run out of power, so I'll put my spare Kerbal over here. 
Um, so again, you can kind of mix and match, see what works. But again, the placement is going to be important. Where you place the Kerbal will directly impact that unit. And Kerbals also have a global effect on the base as a whole. That's kind of the gameplay mechanic of how MKS works. So I have Kerbals, I have my craft, I think I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. I will cheat. I'm going to use Hyper Edit. Now again, this is not a tough ship to launch. Obviously, we can build a whole launcher for it. Um, I'm just going to save us a little time and just get us into LKO. Oh, when the time comes, so two, one, two, three, four, five, we're good. Let's go ahead and launch. And see if I can launch before it tips over. That'll be the fun part. And bam. Easiest launch ever. We're now in orbit. All right, good deal. Let's go ahead and extend some solar panels. And let's get this whole thing working, and then we'll even do some time warps so you can see what's going down. Okay, let's put the tax screen up there. So right now, as you see, all my left squirts slowly going down. I need to get things rolling. So first off, i got to deploy these guys. There is my hab ring. Away we go. Here is my ag module thing. Let me turn this a bit. If I have an SAS power, just so I can see a little better. So turn these on. First off, the C3. What I care about here is command. That's it. This basically creates punch cards. And I'm already at massive efficiency because it's the only thing running right now. And I'll just kind of leave it as is. This governor locks it to 100%. This is more to prevent overrun of resources and power and things like that. So I'll usually turn the governor on um, unless I actually need to have excess capacity. Good. These little stats here, there are five Kerbals in the base. Um, I have 6.25 workspace available, so generally one Kerbal can use up to three workspaces. There are workspace modules, by the way, okay, and certain things act as additional workspaces. Um, if you don't have enough workspace, productivity will suffer, so add some workspaces if you're a little short on that. I only have one module active, and this would be basically the relative um, Kerbal value in there. I can't read it quite here. That should be for the um, overall crew. All right, so we got here. I have this guy here. There we go, much better. So let's go ahead, this is the aeroponics. So I have some things here. The air filter, do not use this. This is only if you're on Kerbin or Lay, or you already have oxygen, you'll have horrible things happen. You'll probably kill your Kerbals. So let's, let's, let's not turn that on. We do need the greenhouse. This is what creates food. We do need purify. Note that it has no compost right now, by the way. Okay, so again, I have a um, total of um, three Kerbals, 6.25 of workspace. I have three um, modules active. This, this is a relative value on crew. So again, this, this guy here, just these basic stats. Again, very high efficiency right now. This should start going down as I add more stuff. Let's turn the composter on. Let's turn the Kerbatet on. And this should need to get better. Note this is slowly starting to drop. Let's go ahead now and activate the PU. And see it slowly started dropping down, right? So now I have a PDU running with some decent efficiency. I have this guy here operating. You're operating. Good. So what should happen now, I should be actually almost in a stasis. This is slowly going up, it's actually recycling the waste right now, because I have over 100% efficiency. I'm okay with this uh, C3 being 78. Uh, not really a big deal. Uh, except I don't need all those punch cards. Let's go ahead and time warp. And this will eventually get static, as you can see. Yay, let's run a lot. And let's go for a long time. Obviously, my EC is just fine, and it'll kind of zip and catch up when I zoom back in. So basically, they'll eat that same food supply pretty much forever. This is now a completely self-sufficient base from a life support standpoint. Note that our supplies, as far as spare parts, we ran for like a month so far. Um, I used <laughs> like almost none of these repair parts. Very, very little were used. I did use all the different types. Um, so you will eventually need to go ahead and send 
more of these guys up, but this will probably last me several years, no problem. So, you see they're slowly dwindling down here. And that's basically it. That is my super awesome, fully self-sufficient base, all taken care of um, for OKS. Start with this, then do more complex stuff, okay? And that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Fly safe.